So you got recognize it. I did. I was at work and there was a big, big uh, anime convention in town this weekend. And I got recognized working my till. And like, when I'm at work, I'm in like work mode. So there's like set conversations I have. And if people deviate from those, I kind of freak. Like, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to say I freak out, but it's weird. Like I don't, I forget, I forget how to people. <laughs> So someone was like, you look really familiar. Like, have you ever done a web show? And I was just like. You're uh, breaking the rules. This is, you're not supposed to do this. Uh, it's against the rules. Y yeah. Yeah, I do. And they're like, oh, my God, are you from what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's that's me. Hi. And like, I was I was such a dork about it. I was like, well, thanks for watching. And I had no idea what else to say. Well, I'm, like, I'm the same way when I get recognized. I'm like, oh, yes, yes. You know, I'm it's just like, hi, in the real that's, world. That's you're, me. I don't have the cat right now, so I really don't know how to entertain you. You're in meat space. You're disconcerting. I love you. Thanks for watching my show, but I'm... Yeah, I, I stumbled out like a really awkward, like, thanks for watching. I, I don't... Bye. I don't... You're, you're a very nice person, but I don't people. It's, yeah. Yeah. And the, the sad part is I people for a living. It's, but but that's a different kind. Like they, you know, it throws a wrench in my routine. You know, you have your routine when you're in customer service. And when somebody says something you don't expect, you're like, what? I, 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 <laughs> that's that's not your line. You're no. I take the money and you take the thing. And right. Yeah, and you're fucking ah, ah. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Yeah, so, you know, if you're listening, thank you very much for, you know, saying hello and saying you like the show. And I'm sorry I was a little weird about it. I just, you know, I was in work mode and, you know. Uh, all right. Well, we've got a wonderful collection. I say wonderful. It's not what I mean. That's not what that world means. It does. It is it's... full of wonder. Well, yeah, but just not in a really good way. Let's let's get to it. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And um, shit, I feel bad. When is Father's Day? Has it passed or is it coming up? I oh god, was it today? Might have, I think might it have might have been, been today. I know, because, well, and, and part of the reason is that I don't remember so much anymore is my father's passed on. Same. So, however, like I usually try and do something for my sisters for Mother's Day. Um, I should probably do something for my brothers in law for Father's Day. I don't know why I don't. I guess because they're not, like, I didn't grow up with them, so I forget. But. Well, eBay did something for Father's Day. It made everybody angry. Father's Day marketing campaign receives backlash on Twitter. That, this, that, just, that should tell you enough right there. Stop trying to do shit on Twitter. Yeah. God damn it. Get over. I had you over on the screen. Get over on the screen. There you go. Computer. The thing I hate about Windows is like, what? You moved a window to the top of the screen? That means you want on the whole screen, right? Right? No. No. Oh, Father's Day is next Sunday. Well. Oh, today's Monday. I'm thinking it's Sunday. Wow, I'm all messed up. The e-commerce company eBay is under fire after its latest marketing campaign for Father's Day. On Tuesday, eBay sent out a Father's Day email that received backlash online by users who thought the ad was insensitive. The email read, quote, your father called. He approves of these deals. The eBay users who received the ad quickly took their jokes and complaints to Twitter. One user wrote, uh, quote, I thought my father had called who I hadn't spoken to in 10 years. Your website is traumatic. Another user who father had passed said on Twitter the ad was in bad taste. Email alert popped up on my phone as your father called. Made my heart jump because dad's not alive. Shitty way of advertising, eBay. See, here's the thing. This, um... I saw something like this on the Starbucks Facebook page, too. The same thing. They, they did a similar, like, uh -huh. 
the dad's favorite, get him whatever from Starbucks. And people were like, that's really inconsiderate because my father died. And I'm like, you know what? My father died three years ago. That doesn't mean that I think the rest of the world doesn't get to celebrate Father's Day. That doesn't but. mean like, when I get, I'm, a, you know, 1-800-Flowers emails me. And yeah, they email me every Mother's Day. And it makes me a little sad because I can't send my mom flowers like I normally would. But because I'm a grown-ass person, I also understand that the fact that I no longer have a mother doesn't mean that they should have to not market Mother's Day. True. But the phrasing here, for one, your father called. I think people are overacting, to be honest. But I, I think the thing is, this whole social media thing and the, the, the internet, they kind of get a little intrusive with this shit because they're like, oh, you're sharing your life on social media. We'll share our life with you. You're a company. So... Corporations are people too, my friend. But I think honestly, things like this are more are more a symptom of our customer is always right culture, where people think that they're entitled to get angry at a company for everything and that the world owes them something. The world doesn't like, I'm sorry your father died or hasn't spoken to you since you were five. The world doesn't owe you a moratorium on Father's Day and Father's Day advertising because of that. Come the fuck off it, you little snowflake. But all right. One person said uh, a message could have been Father's Day is coming. Look at these deals for your, for your father, potentially. That might have been a little. There, there's some lie. It's like, the, you know, there are lines. You stay on your side, we stay on mine, and we understand how the interaction works. And the, the yes, social media... I, don't really, well, I don't really have a problem with it. I don't see where it's offensive unless you're being way too sensitive. It's, it's For one thing, it just stri strikes me as creepy. Just how much they, they try to be like, we're a part of your life. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're a company I buy products from on occasion. And yeah, but that's new advertising because you don't have to watch ads on TV anymore. You can skip them. So this is how they a company has to engage you now. They have to get on social media and be a part of your life. They have to have you like their Facebook page. They have to interact with you because we've effectively killed all the other forms of advertising. Have you, have they seen how we interact with other people on Facebook and Twitter? It's not pretty. No, that's true. In fact, there was a, uh, well, it'd be a spoiler, but someone said on Game of Thrones, X character took a walk through the internet. It's like, well, kinda, yeah. It's just, you know. Took a walk through the comment section. You're kind of, you get that. it's a little bit crossing some And I get that, like, companies don't really know what they're doing with social media, and it gets really hokey and sometimes offensive, but honestly, this is the second one of these I've seen, and I just think it's stupid, like, I miss my dad, I do, but I don't sit there and yell at the people at the Hallmark because they have a row of Father's Day cards because I'm not a self-absorbed asshole. Move on, delete it and move on. Other people have their dads. Life is unfair. Get a helmet. Ah, well, let's move back to bad teachers. Last week we had the, uh, the, the, Field trip to the sex toy store, which yeah. this week, the times this week wasn't a field trip. It was homework. And I, I want you to, to pay close attention to what this guy actually teaches. <laughs> Alameda teacher suspended after alleged sex toy selfie assignment. Alameda teacher reportedly gave high school sophomores an assignment for finding their parents' sex toys and taking a selfie with them has been suspended. What? Encinal High School math teacher. Uh, oh. Wingwa okay. Luang. Uh, Wingwa Luang. Luang. I think that's how I'm saying that. I'm, uh, I'm a stupid white Lung. person. Lung. L-E-U-N-G. I, I want to say Lung. Like Lung? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he allegedly issued the assignment as extra credit. 
It was to go to your parents' private drawers or whatever, seek out sexual toys or condoms, anything of that nature, and take a selfie with it, parent Kimberly Coben said. Parents said school administrators uh, implied the assignment was meant as a joke, but at least one student took it seriously and showed off the work in class. What is the educational value of this besides how to have a really fucking awkward conversation with your mom? <laughs> Because I'm here, like, I think most of you can attest, like, everybody knows that their parents have had sex at least once because you exist. Nobody really wants to picture it. Nobody really wants to think that much about it. And nobody wants to see mom's dildos. No. Nobody wants or to dads. see dad's fucking avatar fleshlight. <laughs> there are things about your parents that you're just, you're just happier not knowing. You know, like, it just, there's a... And maybe that means we're too, I generally think we are too puritanical as a society. So maybe that's me being a hypocrite. But I feel like there are some boundaries in relationships that just keep everybody happier. It's, it's like, it's, it's like the art. Knowing that mommy likes it when daddy pees in her belly button is one of those boundaries. It's kind of like the Ark of the Covenant. You leave that shit shut because if you open it, your head's going to melt. <laughs> you don't you know there's some just some things you don't fuck with and what 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 exactly did this have to do with math class <laughs> it's at this that is not that is not how you solve for x <laughs> he said it was meant as a joke but at least one student took it seriously that's what they do yeah shit i i'm on twitter and I'll make a joke. Figure out the surf circumference of mom's dildo. Three points on your final grade. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm on Twitter and I'll make a joke. And people will take that shit seriously. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, God, really? So like I, I posted that I didn't want any spoilers for Jurassic World. And I was totally being sarcastic because could that be a more predictable movie? You know, we all knew what was going to, it was like Avengers 2. No spoilers. And I'm like, really? Because I think the Avengers are going to win. Just a <laughs> guess, you guys. But I think the Avengers are going to win. Like, you know, so I'm like, no spoilers, you guys. If there's dinosaurs, I don't want to know. And there were legit people that responded and were like, man, you should stay off the internet for a few days. And I'm like, I so, thought that sarcasm was pretty, st I even used all caps. So... Even on Twitter, people can't get this. So in person, you can't, and you're trusting a bunch of high school kids, not because you give them like, what really a teacher saying I can do this? I'ma do it. He's not really no. I'ma do it. Oh fuck. Yeah. I love that they used his LinkedIn photo here, where he looks so happy. And you He's like at least one of those kids wound up super traumatized. <laughs> Because they found out mom and dad are into some shit. <laughs> Is this a jump rope? No. No. What's with all these balloons? No. <laughs> no. You know, I was trying to show Dan that episode and I couldn't find it. If someone, all right, fine. If the someone, one where we talked about the balloon fetish. I guess my archive's not that good. If someone knows which episode that was. It was called, I'm pretty sure it was called My Beautiful Balloon. And I, I Googled that title it. and I couldn't find the episode. So it's not that, it's not that. So you have to, if someone knows which one that is, let us know. So Tara. Because I wanted to show it to Dan and I couldn't find it. He hasn't seen that one. And it's a masterpiece. Ah, uh, speaking of, oh God damn. Speaking of people who don't understand, who just don't fucking get it. Imagine the kid taking a selfie in a gimp suit. Well, that's just Tuesday. That's not because he went through mom and dad's drawer. Uh, so. <sighs> oh, someone found it. So there's there's the link in the channel. You can, you can copy that. Um, I will save that for later. So. You remember that horrible incident in Aurora with the, the shooting yeah. and, and they caught the guy. And that's going to trial. Mm -hmm. And they have to find jurors. 
before a trial, which means they have to call people in and they're giving them instructions, very clear instructions. It's a very serious amount of business. And if jurors mess shit up, they can mess the whole trial up. Well, guess what? They're messing shit up. Three jurors dismissed in Aurora Theater Trial. Uh, three jurors are dismissed in the Aurora Theater Trial on Tuesday after another juror said one juror spoke with her husband on speakerphone regarding the case around two other jurors, which goes against juror advisements. Tuesday, Judge Carlos Samore asked the jury to leave the courtroom right before 10 a.m. Samore said he received a note detailing someone... Oh, oh, autoplay. Stop it. Stop it. Stop ah, it. stop autoplay. Something you talk about outside their presence. Um, Samore told the court, Juror 673 left a note saying they think juror in seat 9 may or may not be reading the news in the case. Said she heard the information the juror mentioned how they may be calling for a mistrial... And that prosecutor, George Brockler, said asked not was asked not to tweet during court. Wait, they has to ask the prosecutor not. This Why isn't even the cell phones in the courtroom. The pro. OK, so let's let's skip the jury for a second. The oh prosecutor. The prosecutor is tweeting. <laughs> you have kind of something a little more important to do. The pro. Guy? The, the, does the prosecution rest? Hold on, I've got to wait for my page to refresh. Yeah, we rest. This is, That's funny. I mean, this is one of the problems of the information age is you can't effectively sequester people. Like it used to be just you put them in a hotel and turn the TV off. Now, it's almost impossible to stop the flow of information now. Like, can't stop the signal. You got your laptop, you got your tablet, got your phone. Wi-Fi yeah. is everywhere. Uh, cell signal, you get internet on everything. So, I yeah. Mean, we're going to get to a point where either we need to do some really drastic shit to sequester juries or we're going to have to count on. We're no longer going to be able to count on a fully sequestered jury. Or, and the thing is, with the media being what it is, you already were at a point where you no longer can have a jury that didn't know anything about the case ahead of time. That's just not possible. Are we going to get like the only effective jurors that we can get are people who don't read the news or own it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, people who don't. You know, we're just going to have to start bringing in the Amish. We're going to have to seek out like the Unabomber to be on your jury. And good luck with that. It's going to be the Amish and the Unabomber are going to be jurors and trials from now on. That's the only people we're going to be able to bring in. Yeah. I So, I mean, but but on the other hand, these jurors, they're given specific, you know, I know you don't like jury duty. Nobody likes jury duty, but you're there. You got to do it. Guess what? It's part of being in this country. It's one of the little hitches. You have to. I've done it before. It's, it sucks, but you have to fucking do it. So when they tell you no talking about the case. They don't mean unless you really want to, right. or maybe you feel like it, or you're bored, or, or no! really cool happened. Take this, you got to take this shit seriously, especially when you're dealing with something like this. The idea that this case could be blown the fuck apart. Yeah. Because the jurors couldn't stop, you know, looking on, on you know, fucking Google about the fucking, no! What? Like, this is not, like, a 15-year-old shoplifted some polos from the Walmart. Right. This... And, you know, if it gets a mistrial, well, oh, well, he'll probably outgrow it, you know? Like, no. this is a bunch of people died, and this guy rigged his home with explosives, and... Yeah. You don't want to walk on to this one. to be locked away. Don't want to walk on this one. No. Ah, <sighs> so, okay, um... I've been to the ER. It was not pleasant, especially when you have to wait. You've had to go to the ER not that long ago. Waiting in the ER is not a pleasant experience, especially no. when the, the people you're surrounded with, it's the emergency room. They're, yeah. they're normally there for some pretty serious shit. I was once, I cut my finger doing an art project, and the guy across from me had had a chainsaw accident working on his yard. And, and they had him wait. I can't believe he didn't get triaged right in because the dude looked like something out of a zombie movie. Like he lost control of the chainsaw. And I will let you imagine what that looked like. And he was just fucking sitting there in the waiting room. And they called me in first. And I'm like, no, no, it's cool. It's just my finger. 
Chainsaw! Save the finger. Maybe you want to help that guy. So, I can understand. It's a little frustrating. However, this is not the way to jump the line. In fact, this is the exact opposite of jumping the line. Woman sets off e hospital's ER sprinkler system because she was sick of waiting. You're going to be waiting a bit longer. North Carolina woman got tired of the wait in a hospital emergency room, allegedly held up a lighter to one of the sprinklers, flooding the room with about half an inch of water. The scene inside the ER was, quote, chaotic and disastrous as copious amounts of water poured down Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Caitlin Milligan, 20, told police she had been waiting in the ER of Carolina's healthcare system for about two hours as a relative got treated for a back problem. Once she felt she couldn't wait any longer, she went into a bathroom, turned over a trash can, stood on it, and put a lighter to the sprinkler for at least a minute. The patient instigator did, in one way, speed things up at the hospital. Milligan herself got taken to the ER to check for the effects of exposure to the sprinkler's stagnated water. If she was deemed okay and released, she got arrested. This person thought two hours was too long to wait in an emergency room? That's novel. So, because, now, all right. I'm trying to follow the logic here. One, I'm tired of waiting. Two, I need to do something about this wait. Three, I'll set off alarms. Yeah, and evacuate the building because yeah yeah what because and it wasn't even her waiting for treatment no. she was waiting for someone who was being treated it sounds like right so, you could go out and have smoke right get on your phone maybe go down the street i'm sure it's a hospital there's a starbucks there somewhere or a subway or something my ex-husband was prone to kidney stones and there's nothing they can do for that. Like they just, they sit you in the ER on painkillers and you literally just wait. And we wound up in Rochester at one point and he was in the ER and I sat in the fucking waiting room for, I'm not kidding you, 26 hours. Waiting for him to piss out this goddamn stone. <laughs> in a blizzard. I, I, <laughs> and I still managed not to set the hospital on fire. Or, it's, or no, to set the sprinklers off. Let's be what fair. I, but really, when you're doing this before smartphones, when you're trying to do some Mission Impossible shit to speed up your weight, yeah, you're some entitled motherfucker there. That's not what we did. Two hours, people. That's not a long wait in the ER if you're not dying. And I look at her mugshot. She's she's just got like this whatever, whatever. Whatever, I do what I want. 20 years old, you you don't know shit about waiting for things yet, kid. No. Holy crap. Like, what the fuck is she going to do with the DMV? Oh. <laughs> That's going to be her next mug shot, I think. <laughs> we'll be seeing her again in a month. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, this next one. Jesus H. Christ. Real dolls creep me the fuck out. <laughs> well, there's a promising opening. No, I've seen... Real dolls, have, you've seen these things. I think oh, if you've yeah. been on the internet and everyone's seen these. They are these very, very disturbingly, supposedly hey, life... This is actually a real doll that I just managed to program with an AI. He's not real. They're these supposedly... They're, they're, they claim to be lifelike, but they just kind of look with this uncanny valley thing they're sex toys very expensive yeah. like five thousand dollars sex they're toys extremely interactive well and the thing like the, the creepy shit is have you ever seen the pictures of the repair the one sent in for repair <laughs> you're just making it worse there i swear you're well, making it worse because the things that people do to real dolls are frightening like, there's some serial killer shit going on. Well, now they're, 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 they're innovating with the real doll. Real doll is working on AI and robotic heads for its next generation sex dolls. So you can fuck Ultra? After 20 years of selling, quote, the world's finest love doll is developing an animated robotic 
artificial intelligent head that can be switched on to existing real doll bodies. The purpose, according to Real Doll's founder, is to arouse someone on an emotional, intellectual level beyond the physical. So I know I li- literally just made this joke, but obviously it's not true. Obviously, I live with a human person. This is kind of asking to be the first to go down in the rise of the machines. And if you want to see absolute... Like, here's a great idea. Let's take an AI, artificial motherfucking intelligence, and let's just use it for all of our weirdest, most depraved sexual notions. Yep. And that won't evolve into something horrible at all. That won't turn into something that would make Ultron pee his pants. Scroll down on the article, and, and you, you were talking about seeing them for repairs. Look like look at what this thing looks like inside. That looks like the guy from Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> You're not sleeping tonight, kids. Why are her eyes yellow? I don't know. I think I, that might be the camera, or no, some people request them with like yellow eyes and shit. They're completely customizable. But fucking think about it. Like This is this is not a line we want to cross. We do not want to develop artificial intelligence for the purpose of fucking. fucking no. Because that's going to turn artificial inter- intelligence, which already frightens me, into something terrible. <laughs> Like, you're going to have a whole bunch of AIs that are this weird marriage between the fucking Terminator and the liberated hookers at the end of Pat Benatar's Love is a Battlefield. (laughs) Someone said on Twitter earlier that, you know what, I was expecting Skynet to come from, you know, military AI robotics. I wasn't expecting it to come from the fuck toys. And that's going to be so much worse. (laughs) Yeah, because we... Trust me. (laughs) <laughs> on this, and I, I mean, I don't know from experience, but I think I can fairly speculate that you would rather be killed quickly, with a launcher quickly, than with a dildo. Y- yeah, because if if you know, like the the Terminator kills you, he's killing you quick. Yeah. If this thing, they're taking their time. Mm-hmm. We've taught them to take mm-hmm. their time. Well, I mean, maybe. <laughs> Come on, have we? Apparently, early on, they tried doing this, but it was, yeah, years ago, Real Doll, Real Doll offered some dolls with speech feedback and robotic hip actuators, but they have since been retired, presumably because they detracted from the experience. Making them more realistic, detracted from the experience? Worrisome. I like it when they lay there. Don't See, say nothing. Like, I was saying the thing about the, the things people do to real dolls. Like, and the stage, this, this. <laughs> Justin says five, five nights at fuck toys. Yes! <laughs> like, people do serial killer level shit to real dolls and then send them in for repair because there's like a lifetime warranty for some weird reason. Think about that thing. Gaining sentience. Like the thing you have dismembered while you came all over it becomes self aware. Is that is that a thing you want in your life? I don't think it is. Uh, I for one do not welcome Just, our robot overlords anymore. I don't think you're gonna come all over her while she's dismembering you. Maybe you will. I don't know. Our final one this week. Jesus Christ. That is just some disturbing shit there. (sighs) Why? Why would you want to put your... Stop putting... God damn... Just get... Have sex with real people. Ask permission, you know? Just don't... Don't fuck the robots. Anyway, uh, our last one comes from Alabama, and we, we, you know, if you're gonna take the time to rob a place, put put a little effort into it, 
is what I'm saying here. Alabama pharmacist who took gun from robber saved hostages hailed as hero. Sounds like a great headline. It's like, oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, an armed man walked in and took them hostage. Not only is everyone in the pharmacy safe, but they're praising their colleague who came to their rescue. Pharmacy owner J.C. Weeks described what happened, which he witnessed from the outside, among a large, intense police presence. Said a man familiar with the pharmacy walked in around 8.30 a.m. The four employees and the customer were inside while he was en route to work. Weeks learned that upon arrival, the man had a shotgun and was keeping all five hostages, uh, all five hostage and demanding drugs. Um, police identified the hostage taker as Christopher Trail. Um... Trail forced everyone into a back room, but eventually let out the pharmacist in a continuing attempt to get drugs. After about an hour, Trail began tiring out. He said the man then asked for a recliner. There wasn't one in the store, so he pulled some chairs to together, laid down, and dozed off. Donna Weatherford, pharmacist, then picked up the shotgun and fled outside. <laughs> You can't fall asleep in the middle of your own hostage situation. <laughs> you can't just... It's not the fucking honor system. <laughs> Stay there while you have a nap. Okay, okay, guys. I think we've, like, worked out our rapport, right? You're cool with me. I'm cool with you. So here's what I'm going to do. Because we're close. I'm going to take a nap. And y'all just stay here. Like if I was awake. You understand, right? It's cool. We cool. Okay, I'm going to take a... Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I bet he, when he woke up, he's like, Oh, man, that's not fair! God damn it, you guys. You, you cheated! That's yeah, not... And you know, your average drugstore these days does carry energy drinks. There's a... So while you were trying to force them to give you drugs, you could just down a couple Red Bulls and not have this problem. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Or you could not be a fucking moron, but that's obviously easier said than done. So, and no, no, you know, going off on how, I mean, because it took, the guy's got a fucking shotgun. You're scared out of your mind. So the Lady Donna Weatherford, Hey, you are officially... She had written on a prescription pad and left it for him. Now I have a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, this is like, I, I know this, this probably involved the... You guys! <laughs> you, come well, on! Like, that's just the saddest thing. Like, they went to jail and, well, how'd you get caught? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no. You guys, man, that's that's not you, That's not fair. You guys suck. You guys suck. Like this is customer entitlement to a whole new level. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I think the first thing we learned this week is <sighs> a little bit of fucking effort. <laughs> I mean, fuck's sake, the cops we have in this country, at least we should make them work for their fucking paycheck. Yeah. Uh, we've learned that when the revolution comes, the first people up against the wall are going to be sad against that wall. Yeah, and sticky. <laughs> we've learned that, you know, in life, sometimes you have to... Some weights are unavoidable. You can either accept them with grace or you can summon the fucking fire department. And make it worse on yourself. We've learned that in the future, only uh, our, all our trials are going to be at the mercy of the Amish. Or Facebook. We'll just have trials on Facebook. Just have, yeah, that because you know that works if out can, so well. If you can get enough likes, you can go. <laughs> We've learned that telling kids something as a joke is probably not kids a... Kids are very literal. Yeah, they are. And they're also assholes. That too. Especially high school kids. I went to high school. You went to high school. We all went to high school somewhere. And we know we were surrounded 
by assholes. And Teenagers guess, are the fucking worst. And guess what? We were assholes too. Yeah. We just didn't Teenagers know it. Teenagers are the living worst for serious. And finally, right. yes, except for dogs. There's nothing I hate more than dogs, but I guess teenagers suck too. Oh, you're gassy. <laughs> did the cat? I'm sorry, Terry. Did the cat just do what I think the cat did? The cat did. Yeah. <laughs> We're a little farty today. Yeah, get out of here, gas bag. <laughs> He put the cat on the internet, and instead of doing kitty, cute kitty things on the internet, she farts on you. Yep. She's, she's a little charmer, our baby. She's, she's, a, she's very ladylike. She drools on you. She sneezes on you. She farts on you. Sometimes she gets out of the litter box and poop stamps whatever she sits on. She's quite delicate and ladylike. <laughs> Uh. Don't sit here looking at me. <laughs> now she's like, why'd you put me down? <laughs> Good Lord, cat. You can't hear them, but I know you can smell them. <laughs>